Hello, good afternoon everyone. I'm back, Lucha FM, with a, another episode of the AW Ring of Honor Combined um, Diary. Um, thank you for the great support I had in the first episode of the series. Um, it's the most well-received episode I've done so far when it comes to views, watch hours, likes, comments. So I really appreciate that. Um, it motivates me to keep doing the series if people are interested. So please continue that um, because um, I'll still do the series, obviously, but my enthusiasm will go if all the people that are watching stop watching. So I'm going to try and do my best to keep you entertained in the process. And to do that, I've decided um, to start a AEW World Title Tournament. Um, the reason for that is basically I retired um, Daniel Bryan sorry, Brian Danielson, um, and also um, I released the world champion who was John Moxley. So this is where we are at the moment. We're having to crown a new AEW world champion, and I'm quite interested and quite entertained by this tournament that I've set up. Hopefully you are as well. So we've got the first two matches will be on Dynamite, which will be Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland. Bobby Lashley versus Brody King. And then on Collision, we will have Brian Cage versus Daniel Garcia. Darby Allen versus Jack Perry. Um, the following Dynamite, we will have Hook versus um, Kanasuke um, Takeshita. And then the and then we'll also have Okada versus Jay White. And then on the following Collision, we'll have Carl Fletcher versus Will Ospreay. Orange Cassidy versus Shelton Benjamin. Um, I have got a few absences. Oh, by the way, thank you to Curb Stomp City for showing me how to get the screen bigger for you lot to be able to watch it. So you've got him to thank for that. So you've got a full screen instead of seeing like what I can see on the screen. But yeah, so absences wise, we've got quite a few injuries. Um, we've got MJF, Kenny Omega... Um, Samoa Joe's back soon. Oh, Swerve's out. Oh, he's only out for... No oh, no. Oh, I, didn't, I never saw that. Okay. Um, okay, we'll figure it out. Right. So, yeah. So, we've got a few injuries. And um, Jay White's out as well for six days. But, yeah. So, hopefully, MJF and that will, can come back soon. Kenny Omega. So, with Kenny Omega, I'm going to slowly retire. He's probably going to work... Uh, the last the next 12 months and i'll do a big retirement match um not 12 months sorry i'll do a big retirement match at all out or something like that and that'll be his retirement match and then he'll be a road agent we've we've got we've re already retired daniel bryan sorry i keep saying daniel bryan brian danielson and adam copeland they are road agents i tried to get christian as a road agent but he didn't want to know so i released him um but yeah just um we have gone through a bit of a firing spree last episode. So if you haven't watched the first episode, I recommend that you watch it to like understand what the hell's gone on, basically. But yeah, we'll just get cracking, hopefully with our first show tonight. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything else. Let's have a look at creative. So Kenny Omega's meant to be our biggest star, then MJF and Mercedes Monet. Next big things is Hook, Val uh, Vikingo, Mariah May, Tony Storm and Julia Hart. And then Hot Prospects is Takeshita, Hook, Jack Perry, Vakingo, and Carl Fletcher. Um, talk the Talk is MJF, Adam Copeland, Okada, Brian Danielson, and Samoa Joe. We really do need to get some young guys over on the mic because the only one that's going to be here in the long run, really, um, is MJF. So we need some other people to get better on the mic, which I'm going to try and do. Um, I'm going to leave the rest of them for now. But yeah, so right. Let's get... Oh, no, I'll quickly show you the storylines. So I've done some storylines. So we've got Daniel Garcia versus Jack Perry. FTR versus The Outrunners. Mariah May versus Tony Storm. Mercedes Monet versus Willow Nightingale. Swerve versus The Hurt Syndicate, which is MVP, Bobby Lashley and Sean Benjamin. And then Will Ospreay versus Carl Fletcher, but we'll also include Takeshita as well and Don Callis. I'm trying to keep it as realistic to real life as possible with current storylines, but obviously not having all, all the roster that's there in real life because I got rid of a lot of people. I'm also going to be turning Brody King and Buddy Matthews face um, and also Julia Hart as well because we got rid of, I got rid of Malachi Black 
and we have a new House of Black leader in, um, sorry, member in Derby Allen. There is no leader. They were a united group. So Derby Allen is going to have some backup because in real life, Brody King looks like he's going to align himself with Derby Allen. I don't know whether that's just for a short term thing, but I thought I'd put it into the game as well. So we've got Wrestle Dream in 11 days. I'm not, I don't think. I'll have enough time to complete the tournament by then, but maybe I'll have to do match on Rampage to get it to the point where we've got the quarterfinals, semifinals, and I think Wrestle Dream will basically be the tournament, um, the rest of the tournament matches. But we'll, we'll, I'll figure it out as I go along. I'm trying to be a bit more structured with the direction of AEW compared to my other saves, but Ring of Honor is basically going to be trying out as many wrestlers as possible seeing if they're any good um, and then maybe eventually just bringing up to AEW roster because AEW roster, even though I've got rid of a lot of old wrestlers, if we look on here, for instance, if I type, if I, um, no, where is it? Roll, wrestler. So we go wrestler and if we go 30 onwards, we've still got a hell of a lot of wrestlers that are 30, over 30. So we go 35 actually and might make it better. We've still got a hell of a lot of wrestlers that are over 35 and over. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of them will still be here for a while. Uh, Orange Cassidy, Rush, Rush, sorry, Beast Mortars, um, etc., etc. Young Bucks. Again, the Young Bucks, they're not going to be here forever. So I'm going to phase them out. I think Kenny Omega is going to be the one I phase out in the next 12 months. And then I think the Young Bucks will be 12 months after that. And then I think maybe Okada after that as well. So like every year I'll be trying to do like a retirement match or something. I'll just do a big a big thing for them and then put them in the Hall of Fame. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But hopefully we'll have a good time in the process. I hope you enjoy it as well. Um, Ring of Honor wise, I'm probably not going to go into any detail with this at the moment. Um, because they are like a side project. If you can hear a beep, beep, beep in the background, I do apologise. I'm in the conservatory today because, unfortunately, uh, my girlfriend's mom has a week off work and this is the only place I can get peace and quiet away from her singing and making loads of racket. So, um, and I love it a bit, so it's not it's not meant with any uh, horrible thing to say. Right, anyway, back on to the game. Um, we've got an expected attendance of 1,948, which is quite low when you think about it for... for AW is that what they normally do so what we need to do is we need to get this down to 2000 oh no I went too far there we go 2000 and then if we go uh, we've got 1500 oh, I went too far I think we can't do that I think we can only do a thousand actually We'll just go 2,000 and then we'll just go 3,000. That's easier, isn't it? Right, so if we go 2,400, that's too many. Can we go lower than that? 2,000 and we'll do that one. I think that's the best one we're going to probably be able to do. Right, Norwegian Gem Cruise Shop. Okay, right. Boardroom, Um, sorry, booking team meeting. Um, We're going to leave that for now because we haven't really got many points on there. Locker room incidents. Jay White, is, sorry, Jay White. Jay Lethal's turned up. So Jay Lethal's one of the wrestlers that I released he's 39 years old so that's why I released him so he's not coming uh training training is usually the same Jerry Lynn's come to you backstage with a, an idea for enhancing his character well I don't understand that he's not a wrestler but okay um Big Bill come with a creative finish Billy Gunn's been passing those tips of psychology to his child Austin Gunn Audrey Edwards has been a ho there. Audrey Aubrey, sorry, Edwards has been heard openly complaining about Paul Turner being the senior official. Um, Will Ospreay has come to you backstage and said that he thinks that Jack Perry has a bright future and he'd be willing to put him over in order to take him to the next level. That's pretty good then. Right. Address the locker room. We can't we don't need to do anything there. So I'll be back in a minute with the show. Actually, no, hold on. We need to. Oh, that's all right. It's uh, this show is set to so it's automatically. I don't need to worry about that. Let's just quickly go through the absent workers again. So we've got no Adam Copeland, Bandido, Eddie Kingston. So, so the ones that are inconveniencing us, 
basically is is it jy it was one of these here wasn't it in the tournament swerve that was it so swerve is out for a bit so i'll have to i think i'll have one match on dynamite for the tournament and then i'll have three matches on collision if need be or i'll do i'll have to just space it out so the so wrestle dream it won't be the tournament so we'll figure it out like i said these these booking challenges make us stronger so right i'll be back in a sec right so it's took me a while um i did i completely forgot that aw's product is 70 percent matches and then 30 percent angles and i hate doing angles but i'm hopefully um done a decent job that you'll like it uh but yeah anyway so the first match to kick off the show i just decided to put a couple of luchas out there just get the crowd going um so we had hologram defeating drillistico with a 450 splash um we had a lot of high spots the second one at 48 the crowd was sort of into it with a 25 wrestling uh rating was 58 both wrestlers got a in-ring performance of 58 the um Dralistico and jake roberts had pretty good chemistry the crowd were turned off by having a match outside the pre-show between workers that don't have much investment in so unfortunately um the fans aren't really into the luchadors on this current with on this game in real life obviously they love the lucha matches so that's something we need to build eventually with um we did an angle where bobby lashley is backstage with renee and cuts a promo about his tournament match versus Brody king he says he is going to destroy king as quickly as possible he is about to leave but then comes back and calls swerve a bitch for staying at home so at the moment um swerve is not available to work so we've had to call an audible audible and we've had to replace him in the tournament but there is a storyline going on with swerve and bobby lashley and the rest of the hurt syndicate so we want to keep that storyline going for now while swerve's out um, and try and build a bit of heat on bobby lashley the segment did well it got a 65 um so the storyline is advanced with that and so we had ricochet replace swerve um in a um so basically adam page defeated ricochet the match was designed so that the wrestlers could go out there and steal the show which we hope they did the segment got an 82 the crowd were kind of into it with a 55 and the wrestling was got a 72 the crowd at heat at the end was hot um adam page had an in-ring performance of 68 i think he's highly um i think adam page needs to be rated better on this database but and ricochet had an in-ring performance of 76 and um, we also had ricochet take a crazy bump during the match because why not the match got the crowd buzzing we did an angle with tony storm who come into the ring and demands that mariah may gets in the ring for an ass whooping the segment got a 64 um, the storyline between Mauro May and Tony Storm started with this segment. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to actually do a match with, with them, but I think it'll be like a slow build where Mariah May eventually comes out. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, but yeah, Tony Storm benefit from having a hot catchphrase as well. And then basically we did the story. We did the um, the turn angle for the House of Black. So. Darby Allen is getting attacked backstage by the elite to soften him up for his match with Jack Perry, which is in the tournament. So we've got Darby Allen versus Jack Perry in the AEW heavyweight title tournament. And out of nowhere, the lights go off and then come back on and the House of Black save Darby Allen. Afterwards, Brody asks Darby to become a member of the House of Black. Darby thinks about it, smiles and accepts by fist bumping the, the Brody. I don't know why I put the... Um, I meant to probably put the House of Black. But anyway... Brody, Buddy, and Julia. The second one, 58. Um, Julia Hart used subtle mannerisms to hint at a future face turn. So we're just going to do the turn now. So turn face, hopefully. Great. That's good. Can let this one, that's a complete success. Hopefully the same. There we go. Right. So that's good. And we did a tag team match with Young Bucks, who defeated the tag team of the House of Black, which is Darby Allen, Buddy Matthews. Um, Nicholas Jackson pin Buddy Matthews illegally using the ropes for leverage. The match was designed to sell a specific story. So during the match, we also had Jack Perry distract Darby Allen. Um, and uh, the Young Bucks have made a defense number five of the tag team titles. 
So the segment got an 81, so that's really good. The crowd wasn't really into it, 52. Wrestling was 71. The uh, Young Bucks were obviously the stand-up performers in this match. Um, both teams... Oh, sorry, the Young Bucks obviously got the bonuses. Um, Nicholas Jackson was held back by the chaotic nature of the match. And, uh, yeah, not too bad. Right, so... We did a hype video for the feud between the Don Callis family and Will Ospreay after Carl's... So basically, it was a recap video from the previous pay-per-view where um, Carl Fletcher um, attacked Will Ospreay and betrayed him. Um, so the second one only got a 39, but, you know, a couple of greens here. And the storyline starts with that segment. So we then went to have a women's tag team match with the heel team of Mercedes Monet and Athena, who would be an awesome tag team in real life, um, defeating the tag team of Willow Nightingale and Hikaru uh, Shida. Hikaru Shida? Sorry, not Hikaru. Hikaru Shida. Mercedes Monet submitted Shida with the bank statement. The match was designed to tell a specific story. Um, the segment got a 70. Crowd was sort of into it with a 49. Wrestling got 58. The standout performer was Mercedes Monet, but Athena was pretty good as well. Uh, Willow Nightingale only got 53, which is a bit harsh. I think she's very good in the ring. Fortunately, Willow Nightingale and Shida do not work well as a team. Their timing was all over the place, so I think that didn't help the match either. But, yeah, we, le we learn as we go along. Um, afterwards, we had Monet attack Nightingale with a chair to the back after their match. The second got a 52 rating, so that continues their storyline. And then in the main event, in the heavyweight tournament match, we had Bobby Lashley defeating Brody King with the Dominator. Segment got a 65, 51 for the crowd, and 59 for the wrestling. Um, both wrestlers were okay in the ring, but nothing major. But yeah, so all good. Let's see how we did overall. So we increased our popularity in 30 regions. Um, we we have limited popularity, so we need to probably work on our broadcasting deals with these nation uh, countries. Sorry, um, and the show benefit from having quite a wide selection of angles. So that's good. We're waiting for the final attendance, which I've never seen before, but okay. Um, so we'll finish the show. The best match was Adam Page versus Ricochet. Um but not far off the Young Bucks defeating House of Black. But yeah, pretty good first show, I reckon. Locker room incidents, nothing. That's good to see. Um, address. Oh, we got Rampage now. <laughs> okay, so Rampage is probably going to have... I think I might have to do one of the tournament matches as the main event. So I'll be back in a minute with Rampage. Right, we're back. Um, so Rampage is going to be a bit of a throw about show like I usually do but there is going to be some storyline involvement and tournament involvement as well but um so I got rid of Max Caster because I can't stand him personally I just don't like him he's okay in the ring he's okay he was okay with Bowens but I always thought that Bowens even though Caster was better on the mic I always liked Bowens more I just think he looks more like a superstar um but yeah so we had Anthony Bowens defeating Nick Wayne Got 65 for the segment, 40 for the crowd, 55 for the wrestling. Anthony Bowen's not the best in the ring, but he is going to be a bit of a pet project for me as a singles wrestler, so we'll see how it goes. Um, afterwards, we did an angle with uh, Nick Wayne attacking Bowen's after the match to get him his heat back. We then did Mina uh, Sharakawa defeating Serena D with the implant DDT. The match was designed to work the crowd, Seven got a 53, crowd got a 34 rating, and wrestling got a 52. Um, unfortunately, the match was poorly placed. The crowd was already hot. So basically, I did the aim to work the crowd, and I messed up. So I learned from that. Um, Serenity was the better worker out of the two. Then we did an angle afterwards with Serena attacking Mina after the match. And... Finally, we had the heavyweight tournament match where we had Daniel Garcia defeat the monster that is Brian Cage by submission with the sharpshooter. The match was designed to tell a specific story. The segment got off 60. Crowd um, was 
sort of into it with a 40 rating. Wrestling was 51. The, um, yeah, so not too bad. But yeah, Daniel Garcia progresses to the next round of the tournament. And um, we then did, um, basically, we had Daniel Garcia... Daniel Garcia stands victorious after his match, uh, but is interrupted by Jack Perry, who cuts a promo on him, and they go back and forth. The segment got a 44. The storyline continues. Uh, sorry, started with this segment, and uh, yeah, pretty good angle to end the show. Fortunately, we used Mina too much and Serena too much. Um, overall rank was 54. We only got 1,594 people. So I assume the reason why... The attendance was not given yet was because of Rampage as well. So um, Rampage not the best. I think it's just how it is. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna, I think if I can get rid of Rampage, I will. But we'll see. Right. So ticket sales we got twenty three thousand nine hundred ten. We got one million one hundred fifty seven from broadcasting. I'm not gonna do this every time, by the way, because it's probably gonna be the same every time. And then merchandise we got just under twenty thousand. Uh, workers only cost us thirty three thousand. Show costs only cost seventeen thousand. Marketing seven hundred fifty. Overall profit is one million one hundred forty nine, which is a complete contrast to my other saves. So that was that's quite good to see that I don't have to worry about that. Um, our popularity hasn't changed at all. But yeah, not too bad. To not too bad. First two shows to kick off the episode now. There are going to be episodes where I only do a couple of shows per episode, depending on what's going on. Um, some might have more, depending. Like I said, it just depends on pacing when I'm recording these. But we'll see how it goes. Obviously, one week, one episode might be AEW. The next one might be um, Ring of Honor. I've just completed quite a few deals, but um, apparently, yeah. Hold on, let me just check. I'll go through some of them and before we leave but yeah viewing figures let's have a look so 0 0.51 tv rating let's see if we can try and beat that next dynamite episode right then you know the score we, we haven't got a show for two days so i'll be back oh i don't know let me just check oh no i'll delete that i've seen that right so i'll be back in a sec with the next show right we're back um so i'm just gonna go i'm not gonna go through all of them because we'll be there all day um, but I'm trying. To, I've tried to hire a lot of young wrestlers, so we just go zero to say twenty eight years old. Um, oh, well done. I don't know why it's not letting me do it. What I want to do, anyway, we'll do it like this. Oh, that's why. Right, five to twenty eight, twenty nine. There we go. Right. So I've rehired Alan Angels because I always quite liked him in the Dark Order. So he'll be back in the Dark Order stable. Um, like I said, if I just click on the skills, a lot of them I've signed either because they've got excellent aerial ability, flashiness, or it's either they've, they're excellent in one of these primary and mental um, and have good fundamentals, or they're really good on the mic and have good charisma. So Alice Crowley, I know Crowley, I know from um my other save that I'm doing with Second City Wrestling. If you're not watching it, give it a watch. I would appreciate it. Um, she is from Chicago, so just think of Sky Blue when she first come into it. She plays a very similar character to the original Sky Blue character. I think I could be wrong, but yeah, she she definitely looks like uh, another version of Sky Blue by looking at it, looking at her on the photo here, but. Yeah, so she's there, but a lot of all of these wrestlers I've signed, literally ninety nine percent of them are going to be in transferred over to Ring of Honor. Um, Alpha Wolf, I think he just looks really cool to be honest. A lot I've signed a lot of Mexican wrestlers, so there's going to be a lot of luchadors roaming around the place. So the fans better start liking lucha wrestling. Um, we've got Bobote Valdez, who's got potential to have the like excellent uh, charisma and good on the mic and he's not too bad aerial and flashiness as well and he's got very good safety potentially very good safety and stamina so i think he's definitely one in the making um bk westbrook i don't like that name but i might change it very good potential charisma and microphone decent aerial decent flashiness bobby stevenson we obviously remember from nxt 
Um, Bojack, I just thought he looked like a really cool wrestler. So I think he I signed him as well because he has good brawling. Because I don't want to have just all luchadors and all like high flyers as well. I want some brawlers and some monsters. Uh, Callum Newman, we people will know from New Japan. Very good potential aerial and flashiness. Uh, Casey Ferreira, that's if the same. I'm just going to literally, Chantel Jordan, people might know in the UK indie scene, female wrestler. Connor Mills, also from the UK. Um, Danny Black as well. Just going to go for him trying. Dragon Mane, very good luchador. Dustin Waller, um, quite good aerial, quite good flashiness. I thought he'd be a good addition at the time. Um, we've got Dylan McKay as well, who's got very good potential aerial flashiness. I'm not too bad. <gasps> Sorry, pardon me. Not too bad. Psychology. Futuro, who actually ends up becoming a very good wrestler. Um, if you ever start a save on TW9 with the real world database, he usually ends up being re like um, young wrestler of the half year and stuff like that. So hopefully we can get him going. But yeah, I'm just going to literally have a reckless. I remember from, you know, she is in my um, Second City Wrestling save. So she's she's one that I sign. I just some of these I probably won't talk about too much because they, until until they become big, there's no point. Um, Jade Stone, no. Uh, just going to, Jordan Oliver, we remember from, he used to wrestle in Ring of Honor as well, I think. Junior Benito, um, Canadian wrestler who works in the US, Canada and British Isles. High flyer, 450 splash, low down as his finishers. Um, he's one half of Fresh Air among, alongside McRae Martin, who I think I've also signed. So potentially a good tag team in Ring of Honor. We've got Kato Kiyomaya, Kiyoma, I don't know, Kiyomaya, Kiyomaya, sorry. Uh, and uh, Noah Champion, Will Champion, had a, a, a great feud with Okada, so hopefully we'll re-establish that. He's going to be in on the AEW roster, he's not going to Ring of Honor. Casey Navarro, very good wrestler on the indie scene. Um, we've got... Kago Nakamura, very good um, flashiness, potentially very good charisma, microphone and acting as well. Kenzie Page, who's pretty much a standout on the indie scenes at the moment. King Rex, who I actually come across on Curbstone City save, and I can understand why. Very good aerial and flashiness. Very good potential charisma. Uh, we've got, let's keep going. Uh, Lady Wind, only 18 years old, Mexican wrestler, but very good aerial and flashiness and then good charisma. We want to try and make the women's roster as good as possible, as versatile as possible. Leon Slater, people will know from the UK scene, the next big thing on the UK scene, very good aerial wrestler. Him and Will Ospreay would probably have a very good match if they wrestled. I can't believe Leo Rush is only 29. I feel like he's been wrestling for about 30 years. LG Cleary, another one I, I nicked from the Curbstamp City save. He's a pretty good worker. Luke Jacobs, another standout in the UK scene. Um, Marcus Mathers, pretty good aerial. Uh, Marika Kabashi, um, very good potential charisma and acting. Decent microphone, 30, good flashiness as well. Nothing to stand out on the other sides of things, but hopefully that will change over time. We signed Mark Billington because he's because his brother or cousin, I can't remember, he is with Ring of Honor at the moment. So we've signed him. Mascara Dorada, who um on Curve Stump City Save ends up becoming I think he ends up becoming wrestler of the year or something. So we will keep he's gonna be on the AEW roster. Uh Masha Slamovich is also uh gonna be on the main roster as well. She is from TNA. So we've nicked a few off TNA by the way. We've got May Saruga as well, who people might remember from AEW Dark and stuff like that. Um, she was Emi Sakura's manager, or like tag team partner and stuff like that. She is um, very 
good as well. Millie McKenzie, who I, I sign in literally every save I do if I can help it because she's just an amazing women's wrestler. I've watched her from day one. So I used to go to Fight Club Pro shows back in the day for people who didn't know. And um, she was only training at the time, but she, she was there. And then basically Nixon Newell, who people know as Tegan Knox in WWE, she, when she left Fight Club Pro, Millie McKenzie basically become the standout female performer in Fight Club Pro while it was still there. And then obviously she went on to wrestle in NXT UK, Progress, um, etc, etc. But now she's in America. Let's keep going. Right. Miles Kamen I signed because he has very good aerial flashiness and psychology and not too bad in the charisma, microphone and acting and has excellent fundamental and physical, which is good to see. Uh, keep going. Uh, Nito de Lismark, which I think I think he's Lismark Jr.'s son, um, only 24 years old, potentially very good technical wrestler. Decent brawling as well, good flashiness, good psychology. I can see him being like an overall really good all-round wrestler, excellent potential, excellent fundamental physical, and also very good potential for being really good charisma as well. Not too not okay on the mic, but I think he'll be a superstar for us down the road. I sign him because, I mean, he's, he's, he's got very good primary and mental and fundamental and physical, but look at that. He just looks like a scary bugger, doesn't he? Um, ben D I think he's related to somebody on the roster and I can't remember who does it say oh there you go he's the no he's not he's not um, related but he's the protege of Bandido so yeah good brawling I can see him in the Beast Mortos having an, an excellent match at some point um, we got Rico Kaw uh, Kawahata as well not she's alright overall or like an all round decent wrestler we got um, Saf Sapphire Reed, who's doing pretty well on the UK indie scene at the moment, so I signed her. We've got a guy called Sage Chan uh, Sage Chance, um, decent charisma, good charisma and good microphone and acting. I'm trying to find the next MJF basically, but it's very hard. Shay Purser, who I remember from Fight Club, he basically started as wrestler and not wrestler referee, um, and he was quite over with the crowd, but he's now a wrestler. I think I haven't seen him wrestle. Um, I have had him in previous saves. I had him and Blue Kane as a tag team, uh, for my Fight Club Pro on on TW twenty twenty. But he has the reason why I signed him is he's not he's pretty good, fundamental and physical, decent primary, and mental, especially flashiness. But he's also got potentially very good charisma as well. So we'll see how he gets on. Uh, let's keep going. Spiderfly. I just thought he looked really cool, and he's got he's very good. At, Aerial and flashiness and not too bad charisma. I signed Steph Delander. She's going to be on the main AW roster. Uh, we've got Takuma Fujiwara, who I think is the original Fujiwara's son or grandson. I assume it might be grandson because he's. I think Fujiwara's quite old now, but very good, potentially very good aerial and flashiness and decent charisma as well. So I can see him being a good wrestler. To have Titus Alexander again, another all round good wrestler. I can see him working out very well for us. Uh, and uh, we've got Tomoka Inyaba, who's got who's very good in Kuswara. No, Puro Suara. I can't remember how you pronounce it now. Very good potential technical, uh, decent charisma, and decent acting. I can't believe Turbo Floyd's less like only 26 years old. He looks about 50. And then we've got Venny as well, who people might remember from Stardom. And um, is she, was she in Stardom? I don't know. Actually, no, I think she was just in Japanese indie female wrestler. But yeah, I think that's it on the youth side of things. Um, right, so what I'm going to do... So a lot of these obviously are going to go to Ring of Honor. So now what we're going to do is... We're going to go 2920 and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the wrestlers I've signed so for the for the main roster as well so we've got Alex Hammerstein he's going to be um, probably aligned with MJF I'm thinking of trying to do an MJF stable basically um, 
Right, let's keep let's do this as quick as possible, really. See if there's anybody. We've got David Finney, I've raided from New Japan. He'll be on the main roster, so is Doki. Uh, we've signed Takahashi. I think was I think he's only on a written contract or a paper appearance contract. Jody Frett we've signed. I think she will probably st I think her and Masha will end up being a tag team because they look very I think they're very similar. So I think they'd be a good women's tag team or a good or a, in a stable with some other women as well. That's like thinking out loud. I don't know. Maybe Chris Statlander could be in a stable with them because she she could probably pull off um the similar style that they they've got. We've got have we got any other anybody else? I don't think we've signed many rest. Oh, there MV Young as well, who is doing pretty well on Curve Some City Save. So I've signed him. I think he will go to Ring of Honor for now because he's only 30. Uh, Rich Swan I've signed because he's just an overall good wrestler and only 33. And I just think he needs, I think he needs a chance on the big scene. Um, and I also think him and Ricochet would probably be a good tag team. They have tag team, they have tagged up before as well. I think they were called the Alf, Alf, uh, Afro-American Wolves or something like that. And other ones as well. Uh, let's keep going. Session Moth Martina, I think she's going to go Ring of Honor for now. But yeah, we've signed her. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, so that's it. So not many on the main roster that we're going to keep. But yeah, so that's that. And then we're going to skip forward to the next AEW show. And then what I'll do offline after I finish this episode, I'll send a lot of these wrestlers to Ring of Honor. Um, right, we've got new goals, so let's have a look. So goal one is Ring of Honor must have risen to size, to at least medium size. Your current size is small. We've got 836 days to complete that. And then goal two is you cannot hire any wrestler over the age of 38, which is fine because we've, we've kind of got a youth movement going on at the moment with Ring of Honor and AEW in general. Um and then you can't hire any wrestlers whose class is having a psychopath style, which I think is okay because I don't think we're going to sign anybody like that anyway. Right. Okay. So we potentially might be losing Lee Moriarty, but it's no big loss to me. I think Ring of Honor is is going to be mostly me pushing the wrestlers that we've just signed, but it won't be on this episode. Um. So we're potentially going to get 2,000 fans. So... We'll just do that one. Booking team meeting. We'll, again, we'll leave that for now. I'm not too bothered about that. Right, locker room instance. Claudio Castanoli is turned up and requested that he be allowed to hang out backstage. He's an unemployed worker who happens to live nearby. He's worked for an AEW before, most recently. A stint from, anyway, yeah. Um, he's 43 years old, so that's the reason why I got rid of him. I just, I just don't see the point. He has a deep friendship with quite a few of the guys, so I will bring him in like to go backstage, but I, he won't be wrestling. Uh, Prince Nana has lifted the back room. Uh, sorry, Prince Nana has lifted the locker room with a silly game created quickly. He became very popular backstage. Jake Roberts helped create a fun and relaxed atmosphere backstage after finding a discarded karaoke machine and starting an impromptu pre-show competition. His medley, his sorry, his medley of power ballads apparently stole the rust, stole the show. And then Mike Bennett came to you backstage with angle idea. It's been automatically added. Training, training. Ford into others backstage. Harley, Cameron, and Bojack are now traveling boys. Right. Don't do anything on that one. Okay. Right. So I'll be back in a minute with the first collision episode. Right. We're back. Um, this is our first collision episode, and um, we we started off with another high flying match between um, this time it's Hologram who is continuing his winning streak. He defeats Dante Martin with the four fifty splash. The match was designed to revolve around high spots. The segment got fifty five. Crowd only uh, sort of into it twenty nine. Wrestling got forty nine. Both wrestlers were okay in the ring okay start to the show we did an angle with darby allen who's walking backstage but out of nowhere jack perry attacks darby with a steel pipe repeatedly hitting him in the ribs same one got a 47 um and then we 
had straight after that we had Daniel Garcia who was being interviewed by Rene anyway and then Rene Rene sorry tells Garcia that Darby Allen was just attacked viciously by Jack Perry. Daniel Garcia cuts a passionate promo telling Jack Perry is going to destroy him. The segment got a 56. The storyline continues. Daniel Garcia invented a new catchphrase and will likely boost his ability on the microphone, which is good to see. Um, we did a comedy... No, we didn't, sorry. We did a normal tag team match between Private Party, who defeated the Kingdom um, with the Gin and Juice. The match was designed to tell a specific story, and the segment got a 61. Uh, the crowd got uh, crowd rating was 32, wrestling was 51. The best worker of the match was Isaiah Cassidy with a 59. Uh, Mike Bennett was really off his game. The got lots of greens here because the tag teams were very good together. And then we did an angle where um, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett attack Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quitt after the match, and he got fit. 36 of the segment and we then did a comedy tag team match just to try and bring the crowd down a little bit with the outrunners defeating xmm when turbo floyd submitted mason madden the segment got a 36 crowd was uh sort of into 30 wrestling rating was 41 um the match went too far sorry yeah the match went on too long considering it was a comedy um, comedy match so next time i need to do a shorter match for comedy and then we did an angle afterwards where post-match xmn end up attacking the outrunners after the match only to have ftr save their bodies and then the outrunners and ftr pose afterwards and that got a 51 for the segment um we are doing a storyline with ftr versus the outrunners at the moment they're allies maybe that will change we'll see and then we had Mariah May defend her um, World's Women's Championship against newcomer Millie McKenzie. Um, with the, she defeated her with the Octopus Stretch Submission. She's made defence number three of the AEW Women's World Title. The segment got a 49. Crowd was only into it a little bit with 26. Wrestling rating got a 48. Um, both wrestled pretty decent. They got very good chemistry as well. So that helped. And then afterwards, Mariah May attacks Millie after the match, but gets cut off by Tony Storm, who sprints down the ring to attack Mariah. Mariah just about manages to escape in time. And that continues the Mariah Tony Storm storyline for now. And then Jack in the tournament um, match for the world title, Jack Perry defeats Darby Allen in 15 minutes by submission with the snap with the snare trap basically he worked on darby's ribs the whole match um and darby just couldn't do anymore even though he was trying we we kept darby strong in this match so he kept trying but he just couldn't get anywhere and then jack perry successfully defeated him to advance the segment got 54 the crowd was into it with 51 and the wrestling got 61 um darby allen with the best performance out of the two with a 66 and it advances the Daniel Garcia, Jack Perry storyline. Um, Jack Perry did seem off his game. Jack Perry and Darby Allen have very good chemistry, which is good to see. That will be potentially a decent feud in the future between them two. And then Jack Perry was seething after the match, upset that Darby Allen almost injured him with a botch move, so that's not good. Um, after the match, we had Jack Perry continue the beatdown with Darby Allen. The Young Bucks came down to the ring to join him. This goes on for a few minutes before Daniel Garcia makes the save and chases the Elite off. The segment got 53. We did this to advance the Jack Perry, Darby Allen, sorry, Jack Perry, Daniel Garcia storyline. So we lost popularity in 37 regions. That's a shame. We used um, Millie McKenzie, Turbo Floyd, and Truth Madden too much, and so did we, we did with Mike Bennett, Matt Taven, Mark Quinn, and Isaiah Kennedy, Cassidy. I think they were just put off by the Lack of stars, I suppose. We need to work on that next time. Financial report. Um, we made an overall profit of just under a million. We unfortunately decreased our popularity, which is not good. That is not good. Right, so we now have a Ring of Honor taping. Um, we are expected only 333 people. So I'm just going to search for... 
uh, uh, should we go 400? We'll go 400 and then we'll go 300. So hopefully that will help us. Yep, yeah, so that'll do. So we'll just use this one for today's show. Booking room meeting, we're not going to bother with that. So ring of, this Ring of Honor one is going to be very... Um, there's not going to be any structure to it because at the moment I don't know what I'm, I don't know who I'm going to push on Ring of Honor. I want to try out a lot of wrestlers like I've done in my other saves and then figure out who's the who which wrestlers to book from there. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to book this Ring of Honor show and I'll be back in a second with that show. Right, we're back for the Ring of Honor show now. Um, because of time constraints, this will be the last show of the episode um i didn't realize that i'd have like two shows to book per like day so to speak so technically it's been four shows booked um but it might it might feel like less so pacing wise i will get better um like i said it's completely new to me managing two promotions on one save so all i ask is you just bear with us um it's still a decent length episode and there's a lot happened so hopefully you, you'll enjoy it Anyway, let's get cracking with the Ring of Honor show. So in the first, oh, by the way, we were quite limited with our roster because I did get rid of a lot of wrestlers on the Ring of Honor rest, uh, roster. So we we are limited, but that will change next episode because obviously we're going to shift over a lot of wrestlers from AEW to Ring of Honor. Um, but anyway, first match of the night was Blake Christian defeating Anthony Henry. The match was designed to revolve around a lot of high spots. We got 32 for the segment, 27 for the crowd, and 29 for the wrestling. Uh, nothing major to talk about there. We did a post-match beatdown from Anthony Henry, who attacked Blake Christian after the match. We got a 44 for the segment. So the segment post-match attack did better than the actual match. We had Billy Starks defeating Lady Frost by submission. The segment got 48, 25 for the crowd, 41 for the wrestling. Billy Starks of, um, was the better worker out of the two. Then we did a post-match beatdown from Lady Frost on Billy Starks. Got a 38 for the segment. Um, in, a, in a in a match that had subpar wrestling and little heat, Lee Johnson defeated Aaron Solo with the one shot. The segment got a 41. The crowd was not into it at all. Only gave 19. And the wrestling rating was 35. Um, Aaron Solo was the better worker at the two. Unfortunately, Lee Johnson was off his game. And then we had Trisha Dora defeating Mercedes M Martinez with the Lariat Tubman. The seven got did well, actually. It got 62. Crowd was sort of into it with a 28, and the wrestling rating was a 53. Um, Mar Mercedes Martinez, the veteran, probably carried the match well, but Trisha Dora also performed quite well with a 50 rating, which isn't too bad. And then we did, obviously, the... We did a um, angle afterwards with post match beat down from Mercedes Monet, Mercedes Monet, Mercedes Martinez attacking Trisha Dora, and then in a in a bout that had decent wrestling but little heat, we had the Premier Athletes Four. So I've done I started a new stable, new Premier new Premier Athletes stable with Mark Sterling there, but we've got Nick. Camarotto and Angelico in the stable. I will tell you about more about the stable next episode. Um, but this is the first time they've tagged together. The segment got 50, 19 for the crowd, 40 for the wrestling. Uh, Angelico was the was the best worker in the whole match. He was way above everybody else. Um, and then we did obviously the angle afterwards where the heels get the heat back by attacking the baby faces. Um, and then in a in the main event, because like I said, it was limited, I had Jeff Jarrett defeating Atlantis Jr. with the figure four leg lock submission. Um, we did storytelling, and Jeff Jarrett is now the new Ring of Honor World Television Champion. So the segment got 55, 36 for the crowd, and wrestling got 53. Jeff Jarrett held up his... Um, he did well in the ring, basically. He, him and Atlantis Jr. have very similar ratings. But yeah, he is... Uh, Jeff Jarrett might end up being our champion for a while. <laughs> We've increased our popularity in 49 regions, which is encouraging. Overall rating was 46. Um, we're waiting for final attendance. So does that mean I've got another show to book? Oh. Okay. Um, apparently Lady Frost and Sean Dean have bonded recently. 
stress the locker room. Right, I think I've got another. Oh, I've got like, I think I've got four, four tapings to do. Right, so what I'm going to do, everybody, I'm going to just auto book this. So that will be fun. There we go. And if I've got it, oh, hold on. What, what, why can't we start it? So 70 minutes. Oh, we need to do more. Why is it not let us have more? Right. Who have we got left that we can wrestle? Right, men's. So we'll have Angelico versus Lee Johnson. And we'll have them go 25 minutes. We'll just leave it with that. So we can, we can, oh, we've got to do more matches. Um, faces, any division. So we'll do Layla Gray, women's, heels, and we'll have Diamante. We'll have them in a match. We'll just do 15 minutes for them. We'll leave it as that. Um, let's just check 70%, 82 would not be penalised. Okay, so we've just got to do, we'll just do one more minute there. Oh. Okay, so we can't do that. So we'll just change that back. And then we'll go, we'll just increase this by one minute. So that's 12 minutes, Jeff Jarrett interview. God help us all. Right, let's start the show. So... We had the infantry defeating the Premier Athletes 2, which is Aaron Solo and Nick Camarotto. Um, second got a 40. Crowd was sort of into it with a 17. Wrestling rating got a 35. And the best worker out of the four was Aaron Solo with a 38. We did Atlantis. Sorry, Tommy Billington defeated Atlantis Jr. So poor Atlantis Jr. is not having the best of weeks here. Seven segment got a 52, crowd was not into it that much, 21 for that. Wrestling got a 46. Uh, Alanis Jr. was the better worker out of the two. Unfortunately, Alanis Jr. and Tommy Billington don't click. We did a interview segment with Lee Moriarty that got 47 rating. Um, Billy Starks defeated Kira Hogan in 10 minutes by pinfall. Wrestling got a 48, crowd 26 and segment 54. Kira Hogan and Billy Starks have great chemistry, so that's good. Uh, we had a five-minute interview segment with Mariah Canellis. Uh, uh, Lee Moriarty defeated Blake Christian in 11 minute 52 by pinfall with the Tiger Driver 18. Lee Moriarty makes defence number two of the Ring of Honor pure title. Segment got a 55. Crowd got a 30. Wrestling rating 47. Lee Moriarty was the better worker out of the two. Uh, confusingly, Lee Moriarty and Trish... Uh, Adora are different sides of the face heel divide. It's because I'm meant to be turning Lee Moriarty babyface, but I haven't haven't got around to doing it yet. Um, we had a 12 minute interview segment with Jeff Jarrett cutting the promo. Got a 63 for the segment, which is probably the best we're gonna get for the show. Um, Jeff Jarrett clearly enjoys himself with the freedom to go off script. And then in a decent, in about they had decent wrestling, but not much heat. Angelico defeated Lee Johnson in 24 minute 35, 34 sorry, by pinfall with the Superman sent on. Second got 41, Crown got 22, 24. Um, wrestling, pardon me for burping. Wrestling rating was 44. Um, and Angelico was the better worker out of the two. And then we had Diamante defeating Layla Gray in 15 minutes with the Swanton Bomb. The second got 44, Crown wasn't really into it and uh, with 19 and wrestling rate was 36 diamante was way better than than her um we've the show increased our popularity in 53 regions overall rating was 47 and we have 320 people turn up i hope there's no more after this oh my oh, okay no I don't. let me just check right so <laughs> i thought i had to do another show then so unfortunately we made a loss of ten thousand. now why is that workers cost us way too much show costs cost us too much as well so that's just how it is. But I'm just going to use the editor for Ring of Honor. Um, the popularity is the same. There's no pressure for me financially. Like on my local to global saves, I'll be more stricter with the purse strings and try and not to have to use the editor. Whereas this one, it's just a completely different save. So I'll just use the editor whenever I need to and just adjust it. I know somebody left a comment about 
change in some something to do with the Ring of Honor finances. Um, but I've completely forgot about. It, so I apologise if you're watching this. But anyway, right, let's just complete that. That's that done, and then King Rex relocate. Right, so Collision got a 0 0.10 TV rating, 8,000 viewers turned up. ESPN and ITV4 and Max and uh, Owen Happy, and so is TNT. We need to give, who do we need to give time to heal? Darby Allen is uh, needing a break. So what I'm going to do before I forget is Darby Allen, give time off. Um, we'll just give him, we'll give him, well, we'll give him a month off. We don't need him for a while, so we'll give him a month off. And he's happy with that. Right, so before I go, we'll just have a look at the creatives. Has anything changed on there? By the looks of it. Oh, so, yeah, so Kato Kiyo Maya is now our next big thing. So we do need to start pushing him, I think. Chantal Jordan's up there as well. Um, so that kind of gives you an indication who, who's good and who's not. Hot prospects, obviously, you know, you've got Kato there, you've got Masco Dorado, uh, Takeshita, Hook, and Jack Perry. Talk the Talk is the same. Showstoppers is the same. Oh, no, you've got um, Takahashi there. Ring Generals is basically the same as well. Who's hot at the moment? So you've got Athena, Swerve Strickland, Will Ospreay, Hook, and Tony Storm. And then who's not? Uh, Ricochet and Willow Nightingale. Let's just have a quick look at Hidden Gems before we go as well. So uh, Trisha Dora's in with on the Ring of Honor roster, so we'll leave there. We're never going to sign Michael Elgin because he's just a wrong one. Um, never heard of Silas Mason, Jack Rule. I've heard of JT Dunn. He's not too bad, but mm, he's only thirty four, maybe. Um, but anyway, on that note, I'm going to call it a day. But thank you as always for watching, and I hope you like this episode. And I'll be back next. Friday. So every Friday it's going to be AEW. Every Monday it's going to be Second City Wrestling. I know I keep changing the schedule all the time and I apologise for that, but I am going to try and keep to it now. Um, so yeah, so just bear with us when it comes to... And also, I apologise if this episode was a bit all over the place. I will get better at pacing it and uh, making it a little bit easier for everybody to watch. But yeah, anyway, I'll be back on Monday with the Second City Wrestling episode and then on Friday, next Friday, with the aw episode thanks again and i hope you feel free to leave a comment like the video it goes a long way to helping me all the best enjoy your weekend bye